passion. Mrs. Lund is passionate about her students. She's passionate about her content area. She works hard to involve or to develop engagement uh, so that history is more than just a class kids go to for 45 minutes or a test they have to take or a box they have to check. She wants them to really engage in the concepts of history and do more than just remember dates and times and people but really understand what's driving our history and how that applies to, uh, to us today. Learning for All, All for Learning is our mission, and Mrs. Lund is driven to engage every single student. We all have students that, that sometimes we can't engage. They don't like our topic, they don't like us, and she will try and try and try again to engage every single student, and she does so quite successfully. Her passion and drive for her content area, her passion and drive for her students, her persistence in pursuing every student is contagious. And she has had such a positive effect, both as, as just an example, as a colleague, and also as team leader on our social studies team. Uh, they're doing some wonderful things with kids right now, and really, again, making social studies something that kids enjoy as opposed to a class they just we see Mrs. Lund here all the time. First of all, she is the first car in the parking lot every single day. And she does so to make sure that she's ready for her kids when they hit the door at 820. Uh, she's oftentimes here doing extracurriculars. Anytime we have kids in the building, Mrs. Lund will be here and be part of that, part of that activity. Because she values our kiddos, not just in the, in the classroom or for their test scores, but for what they do every single day. Kids like social studies. Oftentimes social studies is the place some kids go to turn off and, and just kind of exist. And in her class, that doesn't happen. She designs every single class so that there is as much engagement and involvement on the student's part as possible. So this isn't a class where kids go in and just sit down and listen. They have to be active participants. In the Learning for all and all for learning, to me, um, means that we all start in different places. Um, the goal is always to get to the same spot, but we need to look at growth. And it's not necessarily you didn't master a certain concept, um, but look at how far you've come. And I think by meeting students where they are, instead of where you think they should be, uh, helps everybody even the students who are where we want them to be. It helps put everybody in the right path for where we want them to go. I push them to go further in the classroom, um, to go beyond their comfort zone. I feel that sometimes we don't push students and we accept where they are as that is where they're just gonna end up. And this is a, like a risk-free kind of environment, in my opinion, because I know that, I know a lot of students come into junior high and they're nervous and they're worried about messing up because they think that everybody's looking at me or my grade's going to reflect it. I want them to understand that this is a place of acceptance and that if they make mistakes, that's okay. Um, but I want them to try. So if their trying leads to some sort of failure, it's still a success because they've gone beyond where they would typically go. I recently taught computer science for a few years and I didn't feel that I really knew enough to stay current. And so I found college classes that I could take and um, because I knew that it was important to my job, one, but I also knew that I didn't want to be teaching something that I wasn't comfortable with. And so I just showed the students that there's always more to learn and that it's okay if you don't know everything. Um, and then when I switched over to American History this year, I wasn't finished with a certificate for computer science, so I continued that learning even after it wasn't necessarily beneficial for my job. Um, but to show that, you know, I had commitment and dedication to what I started and I didn't want to just leave it. Um, and every day um, students will ask me questions that I 
probably don't know the full answer to. And I love that because it shows that, yes, I am the expert in the room over this certain content, but I'm not an expert by any means and that it's okay and that we can all learn together that way. I'm intentional about the way I teach. So I go through and I plan and I make sure that the lessons are aligned with where it is that we're going. Um, standards, I make sure that it's aligned with where my students are and where we want them to be. And um, I just feel like sometimes education is a, a one size fits all kind of mentality when I know that it isn't. And uh, I just try to be intentional with how I'm teaching and how I show that, one, that I care about what it is that we're learning about and the students, of course, um, of where we are and where we're going. And I just want them to understand the importance of not just what we're doing, but how we're doing it. Because if they can learn a skill that's going to help them in another class, I think that's awesome. Um, in public education, I think that most important issue would be equity. I think that we are facing an issue of equality and equity and I feel that with technology a lot of students are giving, given an equal chance at finding information and learning but that's just in the classroom so we can't necessarily control what's going on outside of school and that's where our equity comes in, that we need to make sure that we keep in mind that not all students have the same home life and that there are programs we can use and there are things that we can do just as a community to help provide a certain level of equity. Um, and I think that that's also a district to district thing and that we need to look at when we see scores or when we see um, even sports teams we have to look at where they're coming from and how they have what they have um, and look back and see like okay we don't have this how can we make sure that we can get to where they are to be more equitable and to provide a more equitable education I think since my beginning of being a teacher all I know is involvement. I've always wanted to be involved and I think that my first year of teaching, it was more of a matter of getting to know just staff members. I had moved here from Kansas and I didn't know anybody except for, at that time, my parents and uh, my boyfriend. And I knew that I needed to meet more people so I started staying after school and I started helping with events and then it just became, that's who I am as a teacher. And as I've grown in the profession, I've added more to my plate. And so, um, you know, I've been a class sponsor. I've helped plan proms. I've helped plan field trips. I've been on trips to Europe with students. It's all about forming those relationships with the students and, and the staff. and. You know, when I came here to Greenfield, I didn't feel like I necessarily, like the opportunity was there for um, me to be involved because everybody was covering stuff. So I'm, I've been kind of used to a district where there have been holes that I can fill and there weren't any, which is awesome, um, but there have been opportunities now. Um, and I, now I'm the social studies department lead. And this is my first year with the department but um, I'm loving it. I'm helping with National Junior Honor Society. Um, I stay after school. I do the volleyball book for the junior high games. And I've dabbled in doing the scoreboard for basketball games. I don't know if I'm their first pick, but I try. Um, and I think now that I live in the community that I teach in, it's a lot easier to be involved. Um, and it, I think in a way it helps my family feel like part of the community as well. 
and uh, that's really important to me. Growing up, I had amazing teachers. Um, I don't think that I was the student who necessarily needed those amazing teachers because luckily I had that support at home and um, it helped a lot. But my teachers growing up showed me that you know, being an educator is more than just teaching and it's about caring and building those relationships. Um, but then as I've put my own children into school, I have seen the work of some amazing teachers here in the district that have helped both of my children. My son is autistic and uh, we didn't know his diagnosis when he entered elementary school. We just knew he had some delays and his kindergarten teacher advocated for him for testing and it's a it's a process and it takes time but she kept pushing and really showed that she cared and it wasn't a matter of like that was her job it was a matter of like this child needs more and um, he's continued to grow but he's also continued to struggle and his teachers have been there 100% of the way making sure that he is where he needs to be not where they need him to be and he has shown I feel like the community of his teachers how it is to navigate his world and they've all worked to do that together and I think that watching that happen with my children is a big push for um, me to want to be a better teacher too. She's impacted it by like being like helpful and nice and like making like learning fun in the class. Um, she's like nice and she's helpful and she like helps you when you have a question. This one has impacted my education because no matter if you're doing not so good in her class or doing bad in her class, she always makes an effort to try to improve your grade or improve your just academic like overall. Miss Linda is a good teacher because she's kind and she helps others um, no matter if you're doing bad or if you're doing good and she makes an effort to make class fun and not so boring.